Hello and welcome to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing, where nursing comes to life. In this podcast, you give us 15 minutes of your day and we'll take one complicated nursing topic and make it easy. Ready for nursing to be fun? I'm Morgan and today we're tackling GERD, gastroesophageal reflux disease. Let's jump in with our practice question and get things started. So which of the following interventions is helpful in reducing the effects of GERD? We have A, lie down after eating, B, wearing a girdle, C, elevating the head of the bed on four to six inch blocks, or D, increasing fluid intake just before bedtime. All right, tuck what you think the answer might be away. At the end of the episode, we will circle back. But first, I want to start off with the basic setup and walk through what GERD actually is. So I want you to think of your digestive tract as a one-way street. Food is traveling down from the mouth to the esophagus and then through a muscular gateway that we call the lower esophageal sphincter. After it goes through that sphincter, it lands in the stomach and we start digesting it. So that sphincter, that lower esophageal sphincter, it is supposed to function like a valve. It is tight at rest, opening only to let food through. Then when food actually gets in the stomach, it meets the stomach acid, that hydrochloric acid, digestive enzymes, and that strong stuff starts breaking your food into digestible pieces. Now we want to keep that strong hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes inside the stomach. The lining of the stomach is protected against the acid but not the esophagus. It was not meant to hold up with that kind of burn. So what happens in GERD is when the lower esophageal sphincter gets really weak and relaxed. It goes on vacation and starts opening up when we already have food in the stomach. So then that stomach acid, those digestive enzymes, they can actually slip back up. This is what we call reflux from the stomach into the esophagus. And remember, the esophagus doesn't have that protective lining that the stomach does. So you get inflammation, irritation, in that classic burning sensation that most people call heartburn. Heartburn is really a misnomer because it doesn't have anything to do with your heart, but your esophagus traveling up here, that's where the burning happens over your heart, where people would say that is. So heartburn. Now, the reflux, it is more likely to happen when someone lies down too soon after eating, they overeat, or they wear tight clothing. So basically all of these things are making that reflux worse because they are pushing that digestive enzyme stomach acid up through the relaxed lower esophageal sphincter. If we've got tight pressure on the abdomen with clothes or a belt or a girdle, pushing that up. We lie down. Gravity is not helping us out. That stomach acid can slip right up. We eat too much. Our stomach is over distended. That pressure, anything that puts pressure on the stomach, that can push it back up through the lower esophageal sphincter. We get reflux. So not that this is fun or anything, but you might be like, Morgan, this is not life or death. Like it's just kind of an inconvenience that I get this heartburn. Well, yes, but no, because over time, GERD can lead to some really serious complications. The first is usually an inflammation of the esophagus. We call this esophagitis because, you know, the esophagus was not meant to have stomach acid up in it all the time. So after time, that irritates the esophagus. We get inflammation, esophagitis. Then that can progress into strictures. This is a narrowing from scar tissue buildup over time. So we get inflamed, inflamed over time. That builds up scar tissue. Then we get narrowing as those scar tissues fibrose and that can form strictures. Obviously, this is getting to be a little bit bigger of an issue. Lastly, all these changes over time can lead to something called Barrett's esophagus. And this is a precancerous change in the lining of the esophagus due to all the inflammation and irritation over time. So we really do want to take GERD seriously. Like I said, most people start off with that burning in the chest, the heartburn. It is especially prevalent after a meal, if they've overeaten, 
at night when they lay down and gravity is not really helping them out. You also might see that they've got like a chronic cough and a hoarse voice in the morning because that acid can actually get all the way up into the throat and larynx, especially when they're lying down asleep and everything is really relaxed. Yeah. So with that being said, let's actually walk through a client, take a little journey through a real world primary care visit that I observed as a student, and we'll see how this plays out. So I was in a primary care rotation, and we had a 36-year-old man. He came in for a routine appointment. It was not anything emergent. He mentioned it was almost like in passing that, hey, I'd had some burning pain in my upper chest and my throat. It had been for like a long time, like several years, but it was starting to get worse, okay? So he was complaining about it in passing. He's like, especially bad after meals and when I lay down at night. So that is classic GERD. Laying down after meals, it's worse, and that burning upper chest going up into throat. Now, in this specific case, he had not taken anything for it. He knew that there were over-the-counter meds, but he was kind of not wanting to do really any meds for indigestion or whatnot until he had been to the doctor. So we talk a little bit more. We're digging into it, and a pattern starts to emerge. He shared he had been under a lot of stress He had been going through a tough breakup. He really had stopped taking care of himself, had gained a good bit of weight, about 20 pounds, and was mostly eating takeout and snack foods. He was also a smoker. It was usually like a pack per day. Didn't drink much alcohol, but he really overall was just not taking care of himself and not feeling great. So think about how this relates back to our anatomy. We've got this guy who's eating a heavy, big meal, all right? Takeout, snacks, really over distending the stomach, and then laying down soon afterwards. His abdomen is getting heavier. He's gained about 20 pounds, and all of that is putting pressure on the stomach. It's weakening that lower esophageal sphincter. So that muscle supposed to be tightly closed to keep the stomach acid down where it belongs, but it is relaxing, opening up with all that pressure, and acid is creeping up into the esophagus. That's what was causing the burning in that upper chest going up his throat. So based on those classic symptoms and no major red flags like vomiting or trouble swallowing, the primary care provider went ahead and started what we call empiric treatment. So this is when we're trialing something and then we're going to see how they respond. And then the response helps confirm that diagnosis. If he doesn't respond to the empiric therapy, we're like, oh, well, then that probably isn't GERD because it would have gotten better. But if he does, it's both diagnostic and the intervention that helps. So the empiric treatment for GERD is a proton pump inhibitor. You're going to hear these meds called PPIs, totally the gold standard for GERD. What these meds do is reduce how much stomach acid the stomach produces. So that's going to relieve symptoms. It is not going to fix his lower esophageal sphincter, but it will allow time for the esophagus to heal. Because if we make less stomach acid, less of that acid slipping up into the esophagus, less damaging, it can actually heal. Now, key nursing intervention, we have to take it 30 to 60 minutes before food, ideally in the morning, and give it really a good four-week trial period. This is not going to be like on and off, boom, I immediately have no more heartburn. It's going to take some time to work. Common side effects that you want to talk about are nausea, headache, changes in bowel movements. And then, hey, we need to reevaluate after about four weeks. And if new symptoms pop up, like vomiting blood or having trouble swallowing, we need to reevaluate much sooner. In addition to the med, like, okay, great, we put them on the PPI. We still need to educate lifestyle. Okay, for GERD, we want small, frequent meals. Don't over distend that stomach. Don't lie down right after you eat. Ideally, we want three to four hours. So eating earlier, dinner is going to be helpful. When you do go to bed, go to lay down, try raising the head of the bed about four to six inches. That's going to let gravity help us out and keep acid down in the stomach. Avoid tight clothing. We don't want anything squeezing around that belly, increasing the pressure there. 
We also want to encourage smoking cessation. Smoking directly weakens the lower esophageal sphincter. So that's going to relax it and let that acid slip up. That pack per day history of smoking is not helping this guy out. So those lifestyle interventions plus the PPI, that is going to reduce the stomach acid production, give the esophagus time to heal, okay? Really the takeaway I want you walking away with here is that GERD is a mechanical problem. Think back to the anatomy at the very beginning, that lower esophageal sphincter, it is the gate between the stomach and the esophagus. And when that gate fails, whether it is pressure, you know, we have tight clothing on or gravity is not helping us, we're lying down, the acid moves on up into that esophagus where it shouldn't be and it causes that heartburn. Now, as annoying as that is, it can also lead to bigger problems like that esophagitis, like those strictures, and that precancerous Barrett's esophagus. So our treatment is coming back to that mechanical problem. Prevent that gate from opening so stomach acid doesn't escape up into the esophagus anyways. PPIs, positioning, meal timing, lifestyle changes, all of these things are going to work together. Give that esophagus a break so it can heal. So with all that being said, you've got your key takeaway. Let's circle it on back to our practice question from the beginning and see now if you can get to the right answer and why. We asked which of the following interventions were helpful in reducing the effects of GERD. A was lying down after eating. B was wearing a girdle. C was elevating the head of the bed on four to six inch blocks. And then D was increasing that fluid intake before bedtime. So think it through, say your answer out loud with me, no matter where you are, it's C, right? Patients should be encouraged to elevate the head of the bed. That was one of our lifestyle changes that would let gravity work with us, right? Laying down flat after a meal, we're going to have stomach acid slipping up into the esophagus, heartburn. If we prop it up a little bit, gravity will help us out. So that's both why C is correct. And why A is incorrect. We do not want them laying down right after they eat, okay? What about B, wearing that girdle? Definite no. We don't want any pressure on that stomach. That compression, boom, it's going to push more stomach acid up into the esophagus. So that is a no-go. All right. And then D, increasing that fluid intake. Anything that we put more into the stomach, even fluid, that's going to put more pressure and that can cause reflux. So when we're about to go to bed, really three to four hours before bed, we do not want to be putting anything else in the stomach. Those are the key lifestyle interventions. And don't forget that key med, the PPI, proton pump inhibitor, that's going to be reducing that stomach acid, overall letting the esophagus heal. All right, future nurses, that is a wrap. If you found this pod helpful, I'd love to continue supporting your nursing journey through nursing school, the NCLEX, continuing ed, and beyond. Archer Nursing has you covered with on-demand video lectures, high-yield question banks, live case study reviews, and so, so much more. We want to help you master tough concepts and make it fun. So join us over at archerreview.com Follow us on socials at Archer Nursing for more free nursing tips and study resources. Thanks for tuning in to Pulse Check with Archer Nursing. I'm Dr. Morgan Taylor, and I'll see you back next time.